Today we're diving deep into a topic that's been causing quite a stir lately. The impact of pornography on our real-world romantic and sexual interactions. You see, the accessibility and intensity of pornography can have a significant effect on our brains, and it all comes down to those underlying neurobiological mechanisms. When an activity triggers a rush of dopamine in your brain, like pornography often does, it can make it harder to experience the same level of satisfaction in real-world interactions. That's right, many individuals find themselves addicted to pornography, and those who regularly indulge in it may face challenges when it comes to real-world romantic connections. So stay tuned as we delve into the details of this fascinating and important discussion. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more thought-provoking content. Let's get started. So I was starting to get a lot of questions. I was kind of surprised. I thought, well, you know, I'm male and, you know, maybe that's why they feel comfortable asking. But if you were saying that we're asking about pornography and they were asking, you know, to, I'll just be direct about it. They were asking whether or not masturbation was bad. They were asking whether or not uh, masturbation with ejaculation was particularly bad. And here's my stance on this. I'm a biologist and a neuroscientist, not a psychologist. But what we know for sure is that if an individual repeatedly engages in this circuitry, let's say, say masturbation and pornography with increasingly potent forms of stimulation that are on a screen, yeah. a couple of things happen. First of all, what's being reinforced? What's being reinforced is a high dopaminergic response to watching other people engage in sexual behavior, which is very different than being in a first person sexual experience. So right there, you know that what's being reinforced is not actually any kind of improvement in communication yeah, skills. It's voyeurism. It's voyeurism. And mm -hmm. as these questions started to come in more and more, I started to realize there was a lot of kind of undertones of people talking about fear of or experience with sexual dysfunction that clearly pornography yeah, can lead yeah. to. And here I'm specifically talking about males. I, I actually don't know the literature on females. It's not about the masturbation itself. It's about the impact of pornography. When you keep watching it, you're essentially training your mind to adapt to an unrealistic world. It's like flipping through different sexual performances in a matter of seconds. And that's where things get messed up. You see, this constant stream of dopamine rushes from frequent porn consumption starts to seep into your everyday life. It affects the way you talk to and approach people, especially when it comes to girls. You become so accustomed to this distorted reality that it becomes your new normal. But here's the thing. When you decide to stop watching porn, let's call it P, you'll notice some positive changes. Your mind becomes clearer, you'll find an increased ability to focus, and you will also experience a massive boost in strength. No more constant distractions or P on your mind. Whether you're working on a project for hours, hitting the gym, or just going about your daily activities, your focus and energy are enhanced. And let me tell you, your confidence skyrockets. Without those daily dopamine rushes, you start living your life the way it's meant to be lived. You feel more like yourself, and your interactions with others become more genuine and realistic. So, when you're talking to people, especially the girls, you'll feel more confident, and your approach will be grounded in reality, not influenced by constant content consumption. Also, dopamine seeking is what triggers the increase in testosterone. But as we just talked about it with repeated dopamine seeking or triggering of dopamine release, it starts getting diminished, diminished, diminished. So pretty yeah. soon that behavior is not causing the release of testosterone. Now people are just doing it compulsively to try and get some little droplet of dopamine out of their out of their brain. I personally think that porn and the availability of porn is is a real detriment to the developing brain, especially to the developing brain. Yeah. There's an additional issue with pornography, which is not often discussed, which is that, remember, guys in particular, the brain is a learning prediction machine. And if I'm not trying to say that all pornography is bad, but there are good data to support the idea that if your brain learns to be aroused by watching other people have sex, it is not necessarily going to carry over to the ability to get aroused when you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody else, right? The, especially young kids who are consuming a lot of pornography, the brain is learning sexual arousal to other people having sex. So you're going to program yourself into being a voyeur. Or, yeah, or just create challenges in, in sexual interactions with, uh, you know, with, with peer, uh, with, a, with a real partner. What we want to emphasize is that when it comes to its availability and the extreme forms out there, it becomes a seriously powerful stimulus. It's a lot like other intense stimuli, such as incredibly tempting food or extreme experiences like bungee cord jumping. They all set a threshold for that release of dopamine in your brain. Now, here's the kicker. The higher the dopamine peak, the deeper the drop that follows. And we're not just talking about returning to a baseline here. We're talking about dropping even below that baseline. So it's not about categorizing these things as inherently good or bad. It's about recognizing that they need to be managed wisely 
See, when people keep chasing those dopamine peaks relentlessly without achieving them, it's often because they've overindulged in that activity. That's when it's crucial to consider taking a break, giving your system a chance to reset itself. Makes sense, right? And the interesting part is, the same principles we're discussing here about pornography can apply to other areas of life, like food, or even real sexual experiences. So it's all about approaching these potent stimuli with caution and balance. If you enjoyed this video and found it valuable, please show your support by giving it a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button below. We love hearing from you, so please drop your comments and questions down in the comment section. Your feedback keeps us going and helps us create more content that you'll enjoy. Remember, self-improvement doesn't stop here. Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep growing.